How's it going, everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here, and welcome to another review of the Boruto anime. I'm going to be covering episode 162 today. In this episode, I'll be honest with you guys, it's probably my least favorite episode of the car actuation arc so far. But there were still some interesting moments in this episode, but I'm most, mostly looking forward to next week's episode as Deepa is going to be finally involved in, in a major sense. And something I've been kind of looking forward to since his character was introduced way back when. So, here's the looking forward to next week, but anyways, um, we'll get on to today's review. Just remember, uh, if you like this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe. And, yep, let's just get on with that review now, shall we? <laughs> so the episode starts off with Boruto Connor, where they're trapped in that castle from last week's episode. They're pretty much surrounded. And they manage to get out, but there's just way too many people. There's no way they can deal with all these people. They'll get pretty much killed pretty easily. They'll be stomped down to death at the rate things are going. So they're trying to escape. But the problem though is that Boruto has a scent on him. He had some perfume that was sprayed on him in the previous episode. And that's becoming quite a problem. So they split up. Boruto and Magina go one way. Sarada and Konohama go another way. And Konohama was specifically going back to that black market guy to see if he can get some information about the dudes with the Hashirama uh, cells and where their, where their potential whereabouts are at. Whereas Boruto and Magino, they you're heading off to try and get rid of uh, the scent on Boruto. And this was kind of a funny moment because uh, they're like running around, they're trying to you know escape from everybody that's chasing them. And Magino's like, you gotta lose that scent. And here's a way to do it: jump in, jump in the sewage water. And of course, Boruto doesn't want to do that, so Magino's like, okay, guess it comes to this. So he goes, you know, walks in front of him and then trips him. And Boruto falls right in the river, and he's all covered in like sewage water. So the perfume was pretty much neutralized, or so they thought. It seems like dogs were able to tr track uh, the perfume scent, unfortunately. So uh, they try to find a way down to the sewers, but Borto has a different idea in mind. Meanwhile, Konohamaru, he's disguised as that uh, Miss Ninja dude, medical ninja jutsu dude, tries to get information from that bla the black market guy from a couple episodes ago, and um, yeah. Turns out that they have information that the real um, Medical Ninja 2 user, yeah, he's a uh, he found they f they found out that he's a fake. So Kona Armor was cornered, and Sarda has his back and punches a hole through the ceiling, and Kona Armor escapes from there because you know Kona Armor is fodder. He wouldn't have been able to take all those guys out at once. <laughs> An interesting tidbit though is that remember those quadruplets that have the Hashirama cell. Yeah, it looks like it. we got confirmation that, yeah, one of them sacrificed himself in the previous episode. Because we were all wondering, how did those guys get into the castle? Well, it turns out that one of them sacrificed themselves to the barrier so that they can get themselves in somehow. <laughs> but, yeah. So, the quadruplets are down the triplets now. Anyways, Boruto's bright idea to escape from the Land of Silence is to use that blimp that was hanging out outside of the castle. Which him and Majino get in. And they pick up Sarada and Konohamaru and get them out of the trouble they were in. So it seems like they're all fine. They're heading out of the village or the land of silence. Unfortunately, their blimp is shot down. And once again, they have to escape and they're surrounded again. And this time it seems like, yeah, they have no choice to fight. And it doesn't look good. However, there's this kid in the corner of this alley hanging out. You know, he's right, you know, leading into the sewers. He's like, hey, hey, come over here. Do it now. So they throw down... Uh, smoke screen and they all get away and nobody actually heard this kid or even thought to go down there I don't know I thought that was a weird moment however it's that kid that Boruto saved a couple episodes ago and he's repaying the debt that he owes them because Boruto essentially saved his life and we go down to the, the, the sewers and it turns out that Mitsuki is there so yeah you know that girl that was affected with the Hashirama cell yeah it was uh, this kid's uh, little sister and he's the one that dropped her off over there, so, uh, huh. Plot convenience, I guess? <laughs> apparently, this kid has a network of other kids in the Land of Silence that, uh, apparently are all over the place. He's like, yeah, let me take care of this. I can find those ninjas. So he has these other kids, wherever they're at, try to find and identify the ninja that, uh, Borto and the others are looking for. And, yep, surprisingly, they're able to find the, these guys, like, easily. Like, that was fast. Uh, another plot convenience there. <laughs> but anyways, uh, they head out, and uh, 
Boruto, Sarada, and Mitsuki, they split up from Mijino and Konohamaru. And they end up, at the very end of the episode, they actually get attacked by a bunch of ninja, a mysterious ninja, that are up in a tree. They can't identify them at the moment. We know who they are in the next episode, they're Cloud Ninja, but yeah. The episode comes to an end here. But before I get to the end of the episode, I want to say that uh, Mr. Deepa finally makes his appearance in this episode. Well, he's in the Land of Silence, I should say. He made an appearance last episode, but... It looks like he's uh, stepping into action finally, and he was eating a steak in a restaurant, and it appears that he killed everybody in this restaurant. So he's off to have some fun in the next episode, so I'm actually looking forward to next week's episode, because I think it's going to be an interesting one, because we'll finally get to see what Deepa is finally capable of. Well, I will say that certain things are tying up pretty nicely in this arc. It, be, it is a bit of plot convenience, but I do like that things are kind of being tied up here and there. I still feel like this was the weakest episode of the entire arc so far. Last week's episode wasn't too much better either. I think the problem is, like, the pacing in these episodes, I just feel is just, it's too dragged out. I feel like they're purposely doing this so that the anime doesn't catch up to the manga so fast and we're just hanging back before chapter 16, which is kind of frustrating because all of us want the anime to just get through some of the manga material at least get through the end of the hour arc and then you can do like maybe some of the novel adaptations or something like that but um it just feels like we're just taking forever to get through things and that's very frustrating and i mean next week's episode looks way more exciting and i'm interested to see how the rest of this arc is going to go now that deepa is going to be more involved victor is probably going to be involved pretty soon at least more involved than he has been in the arc so I'm curious to see how everything that we've done so far up to this point is going to lead up to, you know, Kara and Deepa and Victor and how everybody's involved and what Deepa, or excuse me, what Victor is truly up to and what he's truly like. And then Team 7, Konohamaru and Magina are going to see Victor for his true colors pretty soon. That's what I'm more interested in. I'm not really too interested in these uh, n uh, these quadruplet ninjas that are going after Hashirama cells. I don't know. It feels That feels a little bit of a distraction. I feel like we're spending a little bit too much time on it. Leading up into Deepa and Victor's uh, appearances. Or Victor's reappearance, I should say. Into the arc. But, yeah. <laughs> that's just how I feel. But that's all I got for this episode review. So, I'd probably say this is an average episode an okay-ish episode so probably like a five out of ten for me for this episode i'm more interested in next week's episode and hopefully things start picking up from here anyways uh, guys out there what did you think of the episode did you love it did you hate it post your thoughts in the comment section down below be sure to like and subscribe and i'll catch you all later for the pokemon journeys review stay safe out there everyone and have a great day everyone bye